really feel so weird doing this. Can you do it? I'm not a little minimalist. Quite big. Show her how to do <laughs> You're not that big, Daddy. Hey YouTube. I done being cool first. <laughs> Today we went to a real estate investment conference. We really learned a lot of this course and I really think a lot of the information will be really useful to other people interested in the subject. It's really simple and to the point and quite beneficial. I would recommend it. Home equity line of credit. Talked about that a lot. I was so confused with the home equity line of credit. What? So I was writing it down and I was like, wait, so like, I'm just gonna find it. There was this formula. So and apparently you can use somebody else's line of credit to buy your house as long as you're related. Oh, here's all my home equity line of credit stuff. Oh, here's the formula. So if you have a $5,000, $500,000 property, with no mortgage, you can borrow up to 65% of the value in line of credit. So then you take that and then you take the money you have, buy the property, and then the line of credit debt is essentially your mortgage. Whoa! That's way cooler than mortgages. Where did I get this? Was I supposed to answer these? Oh, she gave them that to us. Property looks like potatoes if you write a slot. You know. Just a second. <laughs> Do not sell in a buyer's market. There was, I wanted to see what the things that affect the market were. Like the buyer's market, jobs, supply and demand, immigration, interest rates. And somebody, it was quiet and then somebody's like, the prime minister. And the guy on stage is like, don't get me started on that. He's like, cause I only have like five minutes to talk here. <laughs> <laughs> so they're going on about it. The same, the same, this is the main realtor. He came yeah. and talked to the gal sitting next to us. And she said, they both said, Oh, yeah, been in, been in Alberta all their lives. And she's older. And she starts talking about the 80s or something. And he's like, Oh, so you lived through two Trudeaus. <laughs> <laughs> they said, too, like, so then he was saying, like, when you're aiming for the bottom of the market, find a house, look at the history on the house, like the history of its listings. To see, say the house was listed for 500 grand, then you look at its history. If it's been posted like four times in the last four months and it's been at 500 grand, then they don't care to sell the house anytime soon. But if you get a house and it's worth 500 grand, but they post it for 450, and they post it for four, and they post it for three, and they post it for 225, and they just keep going down, and down like every time the listing goes up. Then follow that ad until it gets low enough that then you can call them and then offer them way, 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 way lower than that because they really just want to get rid of the house and you can get a smoking deal on it. The home inspector. You should have good little things there of all the stuff to take on the inspection. She said to look at pictures. Should to take pictures of everything that isn't in the listing that catches your eye. If it catches your eye, even for the split as tiny as second, take a picture of it because you can review it later. There was something she said, there's this siding that has asbestos in it. And I know yeah. I wrote about it because I couldn't spell asbestos. Some sort of, it looked like slate slide, siding, she had a picture of it. She said it's actually called some kind of brick. It's like block it's brick. Roof. Yeah, block brick. But it's just like, it's for your roof. Insel brick. Insel brick. Has asbestos in it. It's a kind of shingle. So she said, if you don't know, don't just assume it's harmless. Because it really literally just looks like shingles. But, it's but she recommended, like, when you go and see houses like, for the first time, take lots of pictures, take a really powerful flashlight. And uh, she recommended, like, an actual camera because the zoom on the camera, you can zoom in on the roof and stuff from the ground and really see things well on the phone. And uh, yeah, one of the things too is if, say, like one window was replaced. Why well, was only one window replaced? Yeah. And things like that. Or like if you stand things back, look off. fix it up. Oh, and the guy, is this the home man? Who's, oh, this is the renovations guy. Who said to smell water issues. 
places that maybe had a water issue before. You can still smell it. It's kind of funky, musty. Yeah, like don't just that be was like. a renovation guy. And then he was saying too, if the place did have a problem and you fixed it, cover up the evidence. He was saying there was a place that had a leaky roof. They fixed the roof, it never leaks again. But they left a couple water stains in the ceiling. Well, it sets everybody up. They don't know they're always wondering. They lie. <laughs> they lie. I think two of them really like pets because they can charge more. And they really, it's hard for them to find a place, so they're more apt to stay and take care of it. He was saying there was one place he rented out and heard from like a neighbor that a couple months later the tenant with her dad was bringing a door into the house. The dog destroyed a door and they just wanted to fix it. And perfect. <laughs> and he had no problem with the door too. He's like, it's a good door. Oh yeah, they all said to do your research. The tenant says they work for that person, write it down. The tenant says their name, write it down. The tenant says their previous landlord, write it down. Write all those things down. Then, so then, actually they have to, they, what they said is to have, when you list your house, write a list of questions to ask a tenant. It's a very strategic list. So like the first one is to ask the same question, but word it differently and then ask it throughout the conversation to see if they answer it the same way. So they answer it differently every time, that means they're lying. <laughs> There's something, what was it about the whole Cousin Larry thing? I'm so confused. Like he was renting for his cousin Larry, yeah. yeah. like his cousin or something? Because they're related? What was that all about? Yeah, there was something, a list of relative or somebody as a previous landlord, so when you call them, they'll just say good things about them. One of the questions to ask this person that's just pretending to be a landlord, What's the address that you rented out to them? Because usually they can't, can never get that straight. Yeah, okay, because there was no address. Um, they won't know that. And to do credit checks, because if they don't oh, have yeah. a history of not paying their bills, they're not going to pay you either. Yeah. Yeah, apparently there's lots of history in the credit check that you can get. They'll tell you. They don't have to give you a social insurance number. But the benefit to it is you at least know it's a Jane Smith. You know, you're looking at the right Jane Smith. Don't go to the bank, because the bank will have the banks will have limits. Like CIBC had like the highest limit of six. TD has four. Limit of rental properties that you can get from them, not from them, but like money for from them. Actually, the limit of uh, doors. Doors. That's what it was. The, the number limit of doors. So like most of them were five. Even other lenders <clears throat> limit to five doors that you can open that they can carry for. So. If you have your own residence and you own a quad, that's it. So you're supposed to plan strategically how you, which lenders you go to for whatever reason. And maybe like refinance at specific times so you can get a door, and then once you have the door, then the other one comes back up again. So then you have five doors with a lender that only does four, and then you refinance the other two, and then you get the money from that, and then get a loan, and then the next one, and then the other two, back up again and then you have like seven doors or something with a five door lender Concise, is it supposed to be clear? Like your, your, your goal is supposed to be clear? A lot of information in few words. That's your goal statement. Realistic, achievable. Ecological, good for all. Time framed. A specific date that you plan on achieving that goal. Says time bound. And then she also said to put your goal in your head, like the most unrealistic goal that you have. So like say you want 50 grand in cash flow income. And so then she said to keep that in mind when you're doing it. So your goal, you're always supposed to talk like you've already achieved it. When you're looking at a house to buy it for the basement suite into. Looking for big windows in the basement to start with is good. And then he said if the steps to the first floor of the main part of the house is high, sit the house is in 
I don't remember what the main neighborhood was called. There was a bunch of them. All the steps went way up, and then the basement had the big windows. So then you don't have to dig so deep to put stairs into the basement. It's easier to put egos when it's higher up. I think we did everything, except I love this kitchen. I want to husband who can afford that kitchen. <laughs> Call me! <laughs> Lonely. I don't have any friends. <laughs> if you have money for an expensive kitchen, call me. <laughs> you know what? I need to marry someone who can Look afford it. I don't want to pay for it. Is it like a five foot range? It's got the three ovens. Oh yeah, there was the guy talking about capital gain and capital losses. Like there were all these words and stuff that came up that I'm like, oh, Mumsu tried to explain this to me. Yeah, the accountant guy, he made it all sound fun. Yeah, so capital, so he was talking about and maintenance and capital improvements. So this guy, what did he do? He was trying to put everything under maintenance and he sends his papers in and the bank or whoever he was with, sends him like this eight page letter of all the rules and they're like, now, after reading this, would you mind considering maybe rewording your statement? Or we will, it was We'll odd. be out in three weeks, we're not. Yeah. <laughs> it was like this very friendly letter and at the end was, <laughs> change it or else, <laughs> essentially. <laughs> just, and he said essentially, if you have like garbage, like linoleum floor, and the, the dog is running and there's these big gashes and holes in it and you rip it all out and put a new linoleum floor in, that's maintenance. If you take out the whatever that plastic the disgusting countertop is and put granite countertops in, that's a capital improvement. Then there was the capital gain, which I thought was a positive thing. And then we we're talking, I'm like, wait, this sounds like such a bad thing. So the capital losses. So then, so what this gal did, she had these, she had a whole bunch of rubber rental properties, but he just used the two, for example. Mm. I forget what the issue with the other one was, but her, her apartment one, she had an Airdrie, was underwater. So she's like, oh well. So she sold it, but it was underwater. And then put the capital loss towards the capital gain. Yeah, pretty much paid no taxes. Yeah. Saved $20,000 in taxes. By saving her flooded out apartment. By selling it, I mean, not saving it. I was so confused. I thought capital gain was a good thing. Like, when you hear words capital and then gain, you think positive thoughts. And when you hear a word like capital, which is a good thing, and then loss, you think you're losing good stuff. Do they click on your need to subscribe? Yeah! <laughs> Click on the button that says subscribe, click on it right now, and ask any questions you have in the comments below, we love to hear from you, or any other ideas of videos we should do, because I love ideas. Collaborate real estate. That was not what I wanted you to say. <laughs> do 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 do. Come on, come on, come on. Yay! <laughs> Spandex underwear stretches. <laughs> I don't know, just literally popped into my head. Spandex underwear stretches literally just popped into your head. Yeah, I know. I was just like. Love is like an hourglass. The heart fills as the brain empties. <laughs> Get it? Ask any questions you want to whenever you want to. <laughs> ja, ja, ja. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, end screen from the top. Try and see if you can get through the whole thing. If there are any questions, then just comment them on the, you know, the comments. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Support our YouTube channel so 
No. <laughs> <laughs>